All right. This story is really interesting. So yesterday, Joe Biden called Fox News reporter Peter Ducey a stupid son of a bitch. Some people say it was a hot mic that Joe Biden didn't know his mic was on. It's not obvious to me. I, I, I when you watch the video, when you listen, Biden's face is right in front of a microphone. And I think it's quite plausible Biden did know that the mic was on and it sort of like slipped out or he just didn't care or whatever. And the incident itself is not that interesting to me, but the reaction is absolutely fascinating because of the incredible hypocrisy that Republicans are applying. So here's the backstory. Steve Ducey is in the press corps for Fox News. His big thing is constantly trying to ask gotcha questions of Jen Psaki and of Joe Biden. They're often very stupid. But it doesn't really matter. Joe Biden calls on Peter Ducey all the time. It's known. Everybody knows Ducey's going to ask adversarial questions. Joe Biden calls on him all the time. He hasn't tried to get him kicked out of the press corps. He hasn't tried to get his credential removed the way Donald Trump did of Jim Acosta and others. And so yesterday, uh, as Steve, du uh, as Peter Ducey often does, he yelled a question to Joe Biden. The question was, is it a liability to have high inflation? And Biden sort of responded, no, it's an asset sarcastically and said, you stupid son of a bitch. So let's let here's the video and here's the audio. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. What a stupid son of a bitch. So let's go through this. Is uh is Ducey oh, we're, we're gonna get to Glenn Greenwald in a second. Is Ducey more or less a moron? Yeah. His his you know, bogus gotcha questions, they're just so boring at this point. They're they're gotchas, but they fail. Uh now Joe Biden was out of line when it comes to decorum. This is not how a president should speak to members of the press. Uh, I agree with the assessment of Ducey as uh, basically being a moron. Uh, he's annoying. He's just trying to get gotchas and sound bites and whatever. But when I would criticize Donald Trump and say that's not how you should be treating members of the press, I, I apply the exact same standard to Joe Biden. Biden was out of line. Presidents shouldn't speak like this, even if it was funny, even if it was fun, even if it was a higher energy moment for Biden, whatever. OK, so fine. It should not have spoken that way. That being said, there are people taking this incident to suggest that the sky is falling and that this is a dangerous attack on press freedom. One example is a guy named Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Glen, uh, Greenwald used to do some pretty good reporting back in the day, did a lot of interesting stuff. But now I don't know what is going on with Glenn Greenwald. Check out. This is a very somber Greenwald reporting to us that it is a very dark, dark day in America because of what Joe Biden said. Check this out. Hello, everyone. This is Glenn Greenwald, and today is a dark and really dangerous day for press freedom mm. in America. A hardworking journalist, Peter Ducey, did nothing more than go to work today to do his job. He went to the White House to ask a question of the most powerful political official on the planet, <laughs> President Biden, a question, and this is the assault that was unleashed on him. Okay, so then he plays it. That was it was an assault. This is some of the fakest drama that I can imagine here. Here's the bottom line. OK, Biden was out of line with Peter Ducey, without a doubt. The people saying this was a dangerous attack on freedom of the press, that this was an assault when there has been no contempt for the media from Joe Biden during his presidency, these very same people I'm not talking about Greenwald now, but just the people look at Twitter, right? The very same people losing their minds over what Joe Biden said were silent during the Trump administration. When Trump mocked a disabled reporter, they were silent. When Trump attacked Jim Acosta and had him banned and when he called Chuck Todd a bitch and all these different things, Biden was out of line. But Biden called Ducey to apologize. Trump never apologized to the reporters he mistreated. Look at how Peter Ducey even describes the conversation. Uh, after years of clips of the president and I kind of mixing it up on the campaign trail and during the transition and here at the White House, uh, within about an hour of that exchange, he called my cell phone and uh, he said, it's nothing personal, pal. 
and we went back and forth and we were talking about uh, just kind of moving moving forward and I made sure to tell him that I'm always going to try to ask something different than what everybody else is asking right. and uh, he said you've got to and that's a quote from the president so does that sound like Donald Trump? Does that prove to us that this was a dark and dangerous day in America? No, come on, guys. Biden immediately apologized. Trump would never apologize. Biden has never advocated for nor has he tried to ban Peter Ducey from the press briefings. In fact, he calls on him almost every briefing. Trump took away Jim Acosta's press credential. Joe Biden has never broadly called adversarial media the enemy of the people. He's never called the media the enemy of the people. Trump called the uh, the enemy referred to adversarial media as the enemy of the people. There is no similarity between this and Trump. Biden was out of line. I apply the same standard to Biden and Trump on how they talk to members of the media. Biden apologized. And everything about the context is completely different. Um, give me a break, guys. It's it's hard to even take seriously the videos like that from Glenn Greenwald when what the relationship has been with the Biden administration and the media is 180 degrees different from what it was under Trump. If you disagree with me, let me know. But it's uh, it, it's just pathetic opportunism that we are seeing here. One of our sponsors is real paper, our forests on Earth remove about a quarter of the carbon that humans put into the atmosphere. And yet every day we're cutting down tens of thousands of trees to make single use paper products. Real paper is fighting back. Real paper makes paper products that are truly sustainable. Their paper towels and toilet paper are 100 percent plastic free, made without any virgin tree fibers, meaning no new trees are cut down. But real paper is super soft and durable. You don't have to sacrifice quality to help the planet. These are great products from a usability standpoint. I'm using real paper at home. You can do a one time purchase. They also have easy subscriptions. All orders ship in 100 percent recyclable plastic free packaging. Everybody needs paper towels and toilet paper. Buy ones that you will feel good about. And they're giving my audience 30 percent off a subscription when you go to realpaper.com slash Pacman and use the code Pacman. The link is down below.